Hello and God bless you, brothers and sisters. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith, and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor is Dr. Johnny Calvin Smith. Brothers and sisters, it brings me great joy to bring you your Sunday school lesson because we are his work in progress. We thank God for his word. Thank God for this opportunity. Now, we'd like for you to be a part of the Mount Moriah worship experience. Sunday morning worship starts each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. here at our church. If you're not able to join us in person, you can join us via our social media outlets. Now, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Finding Time with God, that is our adult Bible series. You can join us via the Zoom link that I have put in the description of this video, or you can join us via live stream on our YouTube page, 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. If you'd like to be a blessing to the Mount Moriah Church, I have put a link in the description of this video where you can give according to that which God has placed upon your heart. Now, a special announcement, especially to those that are outside of the DFW area and visitors and friends, uh, Mount Moriah will now open our doors additionally on Sunday morning for in-person Sunday school starting first Sunday in February. That's February the 5th. 2023. God willing, we will start in-person Sunday school at 10 a.m. at the Mount Moriah Church. Now, just so you'll know, those that are not able to be a part or you're not a member, please know that we will continue uh, this ministry of sharing uh, the Sunday school lesson uh, via Facebook and YouTube. God has blessed us and grown our social media. And so we want to make sure that we're accountable for that and continue to share God's word as much as we can. However, if you would like to be a part of uh, more elaboration and more opportunities to grow for in-person Sunday school, where we can go a little bit deeper and talk a little bit more and have more of a two-way communication, please join us for in-person Sunday school, 10 a.m., uh, starting on first Sunday in February, 2023. And then we will go 10 a.m. to 1045. And then after that, we'll go straight into our morning worship. All right. Thank God for this opportunity. Before we get into our lesson, let's pray. Gracious God, we do say thank you. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for your protection and your shield. Lord, we just love you. We adore you. It's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our lesson for today, Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. The lesson topic is the blessing of liberty in Christ. Now, in this week's lesson, Paul is going to give us a numerous reasons why grace-liberated believers should not revert to trying to keep the law. Of course, brothers and sisters, we are living in a day and age where those people that oppose the grace, and you have to oppose the grace of God that, that came to us through Christ Jesus uh, if you want to live by the law. You have to oppose it. Uh, there's, there's no way to get around it. If you are trying to live by the law, nothing wrong with the law, Nothing wrong with the law, but the law pointed us to know that we needed a savior in the person of Jesus Christ. And now that we have that grace, not that we take advantage of, but we don't have to live and keep, as it were, the law. Because we're going to learn right now that if we have love, then that covers all of this. Uh, we're going to learn that in just a second. Uh, but we, un, if we share and understand and exempl exemplify the love that we have been shared through uh, from God through Christ Jesus, uh, then we won't have to worry about the law. Because, oh, I'll get that to y'all in a second. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't know why. I just got started. Uh, so I'd really love these opportunities to share God's word. That's why when we go in person, we're going to go and thank God for that. And so a uh, person that opposes the, 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 the grace of God uh, is a person that is trying to keep the law. And Paul is going to give us numerous reasons on why we should not do that. No one who has tasted the benefits of liberty that grace has brought should want to return to the slavery of the law. Having tasted liberty through the preaching of the gospel, uh, we would be enslaving ourselves if we were to try to revert uh, back to uh, the law. And so now we come into our outline, which is verses one through six, remaining in liberty, uh, verses seven through 12, the threat of liberty, and then verses 13 through 17, the proper use of liberty. 
Verse one says, stand, stand therefore. Actually, uh, verse, let me get in Galatians chapter five. It says, stand therefore, as a result of what we've talked about, stand therefore, uh, as a result of what we talked about in verse four, talking about how you wanted to result, uh, resulting back uh, to this and, and, and how the believer is redeemed from under the law, how the spirit confirms the believer's sonship, how legalism is an elementary religion and how legalism, uh, the Galatians, how you can, how you have to understand that who we are, what we have in Christ Jesus. As a result of knowing all this, Paul says, stand fast, therefore in liberty, in this grace uh, that we have wherewith Christ has made us free. Uh, and be not entangled again with the yoke, with the pulling, with the bondage, with the yoke of bondage. We've been made free. And as a result, we should not want to result uh, back to the things of the law. So our spiritual freedom uh, is from the legalistic way and from sin. Our result of understanding just who we are in Christ Jesus. We don't have to be entangled with the yoke of bondage, with sin, with this burden, with this oppression, with this heaviness, and with this yoke, with this burden of oppression of the law. We don't have to be like that. Why, brothers and sisters? Because we have now tasted the freedom that has come through the grace of Jesus Christ. We don't have to be entangled with it. You don't have to look at me uh, because of the way in which uh, I, I couldn't keep the law because man could never keep the law. Because we were all born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So he says, as a result of understanding this, he says, stand firm in the liberty that you do have. Don't resort uh, back to the law. Don't resort back to this Judaism, these practices and everything like that. The Hebrew writer was trying to get them to understand that. Why would you want symbols when you have substance? Don't go back to it. And brothers and sisters, that's the same thing for us. Don't go back. Push forward in what God has given you. Verse two says, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. So Paul, using apostolic authority, says, if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit uh, you nothing. See, these Judaizers of this day, these people that tried to get them to resort back to these practices, they wanted to require Gentile converts uh, to Christianity uh, to obey these certain laws. And what happens is, and we do the same thing, the things that we can keep, oh, y'all don't want to hear that. The things that are easy for us, we want to make sure everyone can do those things. Now, we don't touch the things that are hard for us. See, I'm not going to elaborate. Y'all get the point. See, if it's easy for me to do certain things visibly in the church or outside the church, then I'm going, then a Judaizer of that day, if I was a Judaizer of that day, I would say, I want to make sure you do this, do this, do this, do this, because it's easy for me to do it. And what, but they wanted to keep certain laws. And, but that's not, we can't teeter totter with the law. We have to understand that we're under grace. We're under grace. Nothing law, wrong with the law because the law came from God. Specifically, the original law came from God. But when we try to say that it's a prerequisite to keep the law to be a believer, brothers and sisters, we're missing it. We're missing it all. So he uses this, uh, this identification of circumcision. Yes, we're talking about physical circumcision. In other words, if I'm getting circumcised just to be getting circumcised because I think that that's a way to salvation, then Christ, his work on the cross has profited me nothing. Do y'all get what he's saying? If I'm saying, that's, that's, for, that's for example, if I say that I have to wear, and I'm just using this loosely, that I have to wear a tie and a suit to go to church in order to be saved, then why did Jesus Christ die on the cross without, who had no tie, no suit on? Y'all get what I'm saying? You see, circumcision was an identification at that time. Nowadays, it's, it's a medical decision, but circumcision does not lead to salvation. It was just an identification. It doesn't lead to salvation. I hope I'm helping somebody. This refers, this, that, that was just a religious rite. That was a way in which um, this medical procedure was done to identify 
those uh, those that were of that of the, of the Jewish faith. Uh, but it does not lead and never was intended to lead to salvation. That's not why God commanded it. Circumcision has nothing to do with salvation. What needs to be done is Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It has nothing to do with, you know, and we we have to be careful. And I, I can I can be on this lesson for one hour but I'm going to try to go faster. But what I'm saying is we cannot keep adding. We can't add to what God has already put in place for what required is required in, salv in salvation. So verse three says, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. If that's what you think, then you better be prepared to do the whole law. And the Judaizers were probably not demanding that Gentile converts keep every practice of the Mosaic law. However, if a person is required to observe the law of circ circumcision, he says that he's a debtor or is obligated to keep the whole law. If this is what you think is you have to do, then you ought to be prepared to keep the whole law. Don't just do some. Don't do the ones that are easy for you. Do the whole law. So verse four says, Christ has become of no effect unto you. There was no need for Christ, and there was a need, but y'all get what I'm saying. There's no need for Christ to go and die on the cross for our sins if this is what you're going to limit salvation to. So why did Christ have to die on the cross? Why did he have to be spit upon and beaten and, and pierced in the side if you're going to limit salvation to circumcision? So he says, he says in verse four, he says, uh, how uh, if Christ has become of no effect on you. Whosoever, uh, uh, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Paul said, "Ye are fallen from grace." Now the issue here is not personal salvation, but it's the doctrine or the teaching of salvation. Those who are adding on these extra ingredients of salvation by grace through faith had fallen from grace in the same sense that they teach and believe something is contrary to the truth. That means you have fallen away from the, 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 the basic principles of salvation. You have a salvific issue. You don't understand what salvation really is if you think that it's limited or it includes circumcision. What we have to understand is, is salvation is a work of God for man and not a man trying to do something for God. All I have to do is do what is prescribed in his word. And that means believing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Verse five says, for we through the spirit wait for hope, for the hope of righteousness by faith. In other words, our hope of being right with God comes through faith. I, how do I know I'm saved? It's through the faith in Jesus Christ and nothing more. I don't have to have a sign. There is no sign. Although I can feel them deep down within, there is no sign. If you're looking, see what, what they wanted, it's like they wanted to have some badge of honor. But that's not the way God does things in the first place. I walk by faith and not sight all day long. And so that's not what it was. He says, so we have hope. This is not wishful thinking. I don't wishfully think I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. Oh, I wish y'all get with me. This hope of righteousness refers to our completed salvation at the return of Christ. What is that going to be? Well, let me break it down real quick. And I'm, I'm going a little bit longer than I should, but I've already been justified by faith. I have been declared righteous. Doesn't mean that I'm innocent, but I'm not guilty. I am now sanctified uh, through Christ Jesus. I've been set apart and I'm working out as it were uh, my sanctification, that means experientially, there are problems that I have sometimes and I have to yield to the precious Holy Spirit. But guess what? One day I'm going to be glorified. I'm not glorified right now. I'm saved. I got my ticket in my hand like the old folks used to say, and I'm on my way to heaven, but I'm not glorified right now because there's sin still in this body. I wish y'all get with me. There's sin still in this body. But one day I'm going to be taken away from the from the very presence of sin. 
I've been saved from the penalty. I'm being saved from the power. That's sanctification. One day I will be glorified and I will be in the presence of God and be out of the presence of sin. Guys, I'm feeling like preaching. Let me move forward. Verse 6, 4, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything. That means the practice of this identifi identifying two means nothing for those that are in Christ Jesus. That's like saying that you have to wear a tie and a suit to go to church. There, where can I find that in the Bible? We got to stop putting limitations on salvation. God didn't say they didn't even have ties in the Bible. So for in Jesus Christ, if you're looking for symbols of affiliation, then you're not really understanding what salvation is all about. Why am I preaching so hard? Nor uncircumcision. So whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised, whether you wear a tie or you don't wear a tie, whether you wear pants or you don't wear pants, just put some clothes on when you go to church, amen. But what is really at the heart of the issue is our salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ. But he says, but faith which worketh by love. In other words, the only thing that counts is that a person comes to Christ by faith. That's the only reason. Verse seven, ye did run well. Now remember, Paul lived in a time uh, where he used a lot of athletic type of things in his writing. So he says, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? In other words, I, you got off to a good start. That's what he's saying. In other words, they had gotten off to a good start and had received Paul as an, as as a teacher uh, for them. And Paul had taught them. And so he's very confused. And who hindered you? Who Who has cut you? Uh, to cut in on you in this race of life, in this race of faith. What, how did you get cut? You know, it's kind of, you know, I, years ago, and those that know me personally, you should remember this. I didn't say very long, but years ago, I used to run track. And what Paul is saying is you started off good, but somehow someone cut in on you and it got you off track. That's what Paul is saying. You started off good, and I remember, and I say I did it very long, but I, because I'm kind of bigger now. That's why we only do the video about right in here. Amen. But what Paul is saying is that you started off well, but somehow you got off track. Verse 18, or verse 8 says, This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. You didn't get this from my teaching, and you sure didn't get this from the Lord Jesus himself or God. You got this from false teachers. And brothers and sisters, if there's ever a time when we got to cut off the false teachers, the time is now. Stop listening to people that are telling you that you have to have belief plus, belief plus doing this and belief plus no. Now, if I am a saved person, I should want to do some works for God, but works don't get me salvation. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what gives me salvation. Romans 10 and 9. That's what Romans 10, 9 and 10. That's what gets me salvation. That's right there in the Bible. We got to go by what the Bible says. The Bible didn't say you have to have this plus. Verse 9 says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Y'all get that. You already know if you now no one in my family that I know of cooks bread. But but what he talks about, if you put a little leaven in one little lump, somehow it has a a scientific, uh, whatever the word is that's not coming to my, it has things where it, that it, that one little bit of ingredient will will cause uh, uh, the, that 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 bread to rise. And so what he says is, if if you have just a little, just you just oh, I just want to listen to them because I I love their choir. And then when, when the preacher gets on, I'm going to turn it off. Or I just, oh, I just want to see uh, the nice, beautiful building that they have. But when they start preaching, I'm going to turn it off. You can't open your ears up to this stuff. Or, oh, I'm just curious. So on social media, I'm going to listen to just a little bit of it. But I'm just going to listen to it so I can tell everyone else about it and gossip about it. Before you know it, it'll creep into that ear. And you'll start listening a little bit more and a little bit more to these false teachers whether you're the minority or the majority, turn it off, brothers and sisters. I humbly tell you that it's because we have to understand that just like that leaven or that yeast 
in bread, what he's saying is just a little bit of that leaven or just a little bit of that yeast. It, 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 it does something uh, to that bread and it causes it all to be altered. And that's what it is. It just takes a little bit. You'll start off just being on TikTok or, or Facebook or Instagram. You're going to listen to a little bit. And now you're going to try to find it in the word because you now you want to compare. We don't compare false teaching to the word of God. I know it's false and I shut it out of my ears and I focus myself on the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I don't know why I went so hard on that, but that is so important for us, brothers and sisters. Verse 10, I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will uh, be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. I have confidence. I'm trusting in the Lord that you won't have any other view that's contrary to the word of God. I, that's what Paul is saying. I'm, I'm confident in you that you won't continue to allow your ears to be flooded with foolishness. But I, I'll tell you this, that whoever this is, and y'all better hear me and hear me well, they may be the majority right now, brothers and sisters, but those that are misleading the people of God will face judgment. Now, I, I, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a foreteller. What I am is a reader of the word of God. And those that are opposing the person of Jesus Christ and that are spreading widespread lies and false teaching will be judged by God. And so why join with them now? Shut it off. Even if it means a relationship, cut it off. And we got to stand for the word of God. Pastor Smith is telling us every morning, living by biblical faith. That means when they try to tell us something that's contra contrary to the word of God, we have to cut it off. Cut it off and know that God is going to help you to have victory, spiritual victory in that situation. Verse 11, I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease. So this statement, if, if yet I preach circumcision, could be taken uh, to mean that the Judaizers claim that Paul himself preached that circumcision was necessary uh, for salvation. So Paul is saying, if I did this, then why am I being, why am I experiencing persecution? Why am I going through what I'm going in through if I'm if I'm a part of the same false teaching that you all are going through? He says, why do I do it? If I'm still preaching that circumcision is necessary, he's he's talking hypothetically. He wasn't, but he said, if I'm preaching this junk to you, then then why is it that I'm going through what I'm going through? Why am I still being persecuted by Jews? Why am I going through? He says, if that be the case, then is the offense of the cross of uh, uh ceased. He says, in other words, the preaching of the cross would cease or no longer offend anyone. It was in God's plan that Christ would be an offense or a stumbling stone uh to the Jews. The stone which the builders refused has been that has now become the headstone of the corner. He's the message of Christ crucified is offensive not only to unsaved Jews, but also to everyone who claims to have personal merit to gain them God's approval or salvation. So verse 12, he says, I would, they uh, were even cut off, which trouble you. And this is some harsh language, but he meant it. This verse is, is, is hard for us to understand, but Paul is saying, I, I wish that they'd be cut off. I wish they'd be no more. In, in, in a historical sense, not only were these people talking about circumcision, but they had even gone on to castration. They would keep adding and adding on. And, I, and if you want to get the history, this is one of the reasons why we come uh, to in-person Sunday school. But other words, uh, what was going on in that day, uh, that there were added rituals on top of this. Not only were we dealing with circumcision, but now he puts the ritual of circumcision in the same category as a ritual of castration that was going on in that time. This castration ritual had no more significance to Gentile Christians than any other barbaric type of ritual, yea, even circumcision. In other words, I wish that y'all be cut off because you're leading people astray with this added things. Not only are we dealing with one thing, but we're dealing with another. Cut it all off. Salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Verse 13 says, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. You have this grace. You have this freedom. That's what liberty is. But don't use it to please yourself, 
but by love serve one another. And I'm glad that it says, but serve one another. It didn't say, but just serve one another. It says, but by love. But by love, serve one another. But by love means to be like a bond service, to be like a slave to So, In other words, whatever you need, I'm doing it out of love. And I don't, it's like I, I'm here for whatever you need. What, imagine the impact of our churches and even in our churches, communities, in our families, if we would have that type of love. If believers, not, not talking about unsaved, Come on, just believers, if we would have that type of service, do it in love, not serve one another. Because when I serve each other and you come around my line and I you want you want some green beans, I slap them on your plate. But when I do it in love, I do it with a kind heart. I do it with, with thanksgiving that I get an opportunity to serve. I'm grateful to serve. So he says, do it in love. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this that uh, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. Do y'all see that? All of the law is fulfilled in just in just this one word, love. It's love. And, and, and what I come to understand that a neighbor is not just the person next to me either. It's the person outside of my race. It's a person that's whoever I come in contact is my neighbor. A neighbor is anyone that is in need. He says, because it's all fulfilled in this one word. It's love. It's love. You know, my, my relationship, if I have my vertical right, then my horizontal be right. If I have my love right with God, then I can love my fellow man. And whoever comes in contact with me is my neighbor. And it's all fulfilled. The scriptures, the, te the law is fulfilled in this one word, love. You know, if I look at the Ten Commandments, just think about the Ten Commandments. If if I love my neighbor, then I'm not going to steal from him. If I love my neighbor, I won't kill him. If I love my neighbor, I won't bear false witness. If I love my neighbor, then I I, I won't I won't offend anyone. And see, that's what God is trying to tell us through the Apostle Paul that that's what liberty really is about. It's to love and serve one another, just like Christ served us. How did he say? on the cross of Calvary? God sent his son for God to love the world. John 3, 16 to, to save us. Verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. But if ye uh, bite and devour like the behavior of Galatian believers to like thinking about wild fighting, he says, take heed, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Consumed by this arguing and fighting and all of this type of stuff, take heed that you not be not consumed like one another. See, the truth is, if we refuse to be governed by the law of love, we will revert to the law of the jungle. We'll just treat each other any type of way, be dog eat dog. And unfortunately, some Christians do it like that, but that's not the way God is commanding us. He's commanding us to love each other and love each other in a real special way. We got two more verses. Verse 16 says, this I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. What does it mean to walk in the spirit? That means in agreement. I walk in agreement with what God says for my life. I walk in utter agreement with what God says for my life. I'm yielded to the Holy Spirit. We will be absolutely yielded. And that means that we will, we can be daily transformed to do what God would have us. Doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect. Doesn't mean that there's not sin nature in us. Because that sin nature is not gone away. Doesn't mean that we can't sin what it says, but it says that I am complete agreement and I'm completely yielded to the Holy Spirit. I'm yielded to God's will for my life. That's how I can walk in the spirit. And as a result, if I'm walking in the spirit, then I won't be able to fulfill the lust of the flesh. For it says that the flesh lusteth against the spirit. See, the two can't be together. And you, you can't you can't be walking one and they they're always fighting with each other and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things uh, that ye would they're always contrary they're always contrary you can't do both at the same time either I'm going to be a Christian that is going to be walking by the spirit and yield it or I'm gonna be some carnal type Christian that's just gonna do whatever I want to do. Uh, what God is calling us to do is to walk in the spirit so we can do things that will be pleasing in his sight. 
Brothers and sisters, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I have. I thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for you. And I'm humbled uh, to continue to share Sunday school lesson with you. Let's continue to walk by means of the spirit and we can experience uh, so much satisfaction, satisfaction, spiritual satisfaction as we continue to please our God. God bless you. May God keep you from the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church family.